this yet. Uh, integration by substitution, we're looking at this problem here. Okay, what do you mean? Okay, so again, our suggestion was from Ben, let's do this. 16x squared minus, did you guys get 40x for the middle term? Yeah, minus 40x, right. And then times 4. And so when I distribute the 4, I'm getting 64x squared minus 160x plus 100 dx. And so now my antiderivative would be, well, this is going to be 64 thirds x cubed minus 80x squared plus 100x plus c. Is that what you guys got? Yay or nay? Is that too fast? Kind of. Kind of, yeah. I'm doing a lot there. And I want to say one more thing about it. This was a pain compared to what I'm about to show you. Okay? I mean, what I would love to be true is this. Wouldn't it be great if instead of expanding it, you could kind of say the answer was one third 4x minus 5 to the third power plus c. Wouldn't that be great if that were the answer? Is it the answer? We can always check, right? How do you check? What if I tell you, hey, that's the answer? Check. How? Take the derivative, ddx. I'm going to take the derivative. Let's see. So the derivative. Hey, Tyler, of this 4x minus 5 cubed plus c, how do you take the derivative of this thing? Well, bring the 1 -third down, and then what do we write next? Bing! And then 4x minus 5 squared, bing, and then Bong. What else do I have to write? Times 4 because of the chain rule. You guys with me on that? Ta-da! That's exactly what we had because the 1 -third and the 3 are going to cancel. And so sure enough, that is the answer in the red rectangle. Now is that answer in the red rectangle the same as what we have here? You might ask that. Well, how would you figure that out? What would you have to do? You'd have to cube the 4x minus 5, right? That's hard to do. 4x minus 5 times 4x minus 5 times 4x minus 5, right? But the one thing I will tell you is that if you do, for example, the first part, the very first term, 4x times 4x times 4x, I can do that. What's 4 times 4 is 16 times 4, 64. And the x times x times x is x cubed. And notice this 1 -third out front is going to make that a 1 -third. I know this is the right answer. I know I can get it this way, but you guys told me that's kind of fast I just did. That's a lot of work. I mean, maybe you'd want to show a little more work to do it. But this arrow here, how, you, how, did, how did Paul just get from here to here? That's really kind of mysterious. What did I just do? Well, what I'm going to show you is the technique called substitution. Your book calls it U substitution. A lot of times we'll let U represent a, variable, re represent a function of X. Actually, do you remember what it was we were studying when we did that earlier? 
when we started using the letter U. We've done it before, right? Where did we do it? Well, first time we did it was when we did product rule. That's right. Taking derivatives with the product rule. There was another time we did it too. We did it with the chain rule. I don't know if you remember. dy dx was equal to dy du times du dx. It turns out that what I'm really doing here is the chain rule backwards. And by the way, because of the chain rule, that's why you have this extra little four. You guys notice that? That is really important for this to work. If that four is not there, I can't do what I just did. Now, this is a very contrived example, okay? But it's to demonstrate a point or two. And so I'm going to try and take you through now one more time this example, how to take the antiderivative using the technique I'm going to call U substitution. I think you'll like it. I think it's going to be more clear than everything above this line. Let's see if I'm right. The antiderivative of 4x minus 5 squared times 4 dx. Here's how the technique works. You're going to make a substitution and you're going to change variables from x to u. And what you do is you say, let u equal something. Now, in <laughs> you know how I said the hard part is taking the antiderivative? The hard part of substitution is trying to figure out what to let u equal. I'm going to give you this piece of advice and then from there on out, you're going to have to just play with it a while. That's why I'm only covering one section today. My piece of advice is this. If you see a, an expression in parentheses, a lot of times that's what you let u equal. So in my example here, I'm going to let u equal 4x minus 5. Here's my reasoning for doing that. Because now, what I end up doing is I change the integral. Instead of having 4x minus 5 squared, I now have u squared. u squared. You guys with me? Okay. Now here's the thing though. You don't really want to write times 4dx. That's no good. You can't have u's and x's in the same integral. So that's not what I want. What I'm going to do instead is write u squared times something else. Okay. In other words, I don't really want to integrate with respect to x. I want to integrate with respect to u. That's right. So here's the way it works. As soon as you write down what u equals, we're going to write down what du equals. Now that's a differential. Does this make any sense to you guys? What would be the derivative of 4x minus 5? 4. I'm going to write it this way. du is equal to 4 dx. du is equal to 4 dx. If you don't understand what that means, you can say in parentheses, because du dx is equal to 4. That's, that's the fact that you guys knew. You knew that if I took the derivative of u with respect to x, it equals 4. Well, all I'm doing is something that Leibniz used to do. I'm separating the two differentials. It's why he used these, this fraction notation, because he saw that this was really cool, that you could, write, you could do this little move. du is 4dx. And now what's beautiful is that instead of this 4dx thing that I had, what does that become? 
du. That becomes du. Let me write it in black so we can actually see it. That became du. And so now, here was a very hard integral to do in x's. But I've changed variable using the substitution, and now I have something that's easy to do, right? What's the antiderivative of u squared with respect to u? One third u. Yeah, one third u cubed plus c, right? And now I think you understand where the final answer came from up above in that rectangle. You see it? What does u actually equal? Let's go back to what we wrote in red. This is one third. 4x minus 5 cubed plus c, exactly as I had before. That's my answer. You guys have any questions so far? This is a very famous function. I've talked about it before, right? e to the negative x squared, do you remember what that is? Oh, okay. Um, if you, I, I see why you're saying that, because if you have e to the negative x, that's the decay function. Now this is e to the negative x squared. I think it's worth actually showing you guys a graph. Some people would argue that this is the single most important function in all of mathematics. So you may as well know what the graph looks like. All right, here we go. Second, e to the negative x squared graph. Oh, shoot, I need a standard window or else you won't understand what it is. Here we go. Let me zoom in. Do you recognize this? Yeah? No? How many have taken statistics at some point? Or who's going to take statistics? Let me ask that. This is going to become like your best friend. It's finding area under this thing. What's it called? Bell curve. The bell curve is our name for it, right? It's also called the, the normal distribution. Yeah, I know. It doesn't. It looks flat right. on our screen. Yeah. Because um, I guess I'd have to zoom in more to see the curve. But that's what that is. This is the bell curve. And actually, when you do statistics, you're going to find the probability that such and such happens. My class is right now. It's what I'm going to be teaching on Wednesday. You know, how to find the area under this. And the really weird thing about it is... So which of these two problems is finding the area under that curve? Well, I guess this one is if I were to put limits here, right? Like put two numbers here and here. We learned about definite integrals that way. Then I could use the fundamental theorem. But the weird thing is nobody is able to actually find or compute this integral on the left using the fundamental theorem. We actually know it's impossible to do using the fundamental theorem. So that's kind of weird. The most important curve in all of mathematics, I want to find the area under the curve. And I can't do it using the fundamental theorem. Was this one of those uh, millennial math problems? No. Oh, okay. No. It was more like, you know, here, let me, let me give you an example here. Let me go with negative 0.3 to positive, I don't know, 1.1. Say I want to find this area. Well, my calculator just found it, 1.07. But I'm telling you guys, I cannot do it using the fundamental theorem of calculus. By the way, how did my calculator just do it? You guys actually know approximately how it did it. It used rectangles, right? It divided that A and B interval up into, okay, N subintervals. And it used 
Well, it's interesting. It may have used rectangles. We're going to learn in another chapter some better methods than rectangles. For example, one method that's used, trapezoids work better than rectangles. If you think about it, that might make sense to you because rectangles have a flat top, but trapezoids don't, and so you get less error. But yeah, you're right, Lauren. That's, 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 it's doing something like that. But I'm telling you, we can't do this. Well, why even put it up there, Paul? Well, I, I like to make this point. Substitution is very powerful, but it's not the end-all, be-all. And if you understand why substitution doesn't work on the left, you'll really get this. I'm telling you, we can do the one on the right. Let's do the one on the right, then we'll go back to the one on the left. So the one on the right, I put here. And so what do you think I want to let u equal? I said the something in parentheses, but do I have anything in parentheses? Well, it depends how you write it. Let u equal, any thoughts? Negative 2x. You could let it equal negative 2x. Let me try that. If I do that, what, do, what does du equal? I need to take the derivative. So what would I get? Well, the derivative of negative 2x is what? Negative 2 dx. And I'm going to tell you that if you do this, you see this x squared up here? That's a problem. Done quite it doesn't go away. But you have to try things. And the first time you do substitution in homework, this is what it's going to be like. You're going to try different lets. And, and you say, well, does it work? Let me try again. Let u equal. Any other guesses of what I might let u equal? E to the negative x. I could do that. And then what does du equal? Do you know the derivative of e to the negative x? What's the derivative of e to the negative x? We know that one. You get back e to the negative x, but what else do you need to multiply by? Not x, close though. The chain rule says that I have to take this and multiply by the derivative of negative x, right? You see that? So you get. But anyways, this doesn't work either. Why doesn't it work? Because I have an e and another e, and I'm never going to get that negative 2x in there. All right, let's try something else, guys. What else could I let u equal? How about negative x squared? Now, I suggested that, so of course, you know, you're thinking, well, that's a little better. But let's see why this works. Because now, I have negative 2x e to the what? e to the u dx. In some ways, this is going to clean things up a little bit. All right? Now, what I told you guys was immediately after you write down u, you need to write down what du is. What does du equal? Negative 2x dx. Do I have du in this problem? Well, I do, see? Here's negative 2x, here's dx. You guys see it? All that stuff is du. So what we've just done is now my integral is e to the u. That all becomes du. And so I'm able to do the bottom one because I know how to do the antiderivative of e to the u. What's the antiderivative of e to the u? It's just e to the u, right? 
That's the great thing about the function e is it's its own derivative. It almost worked with the one Tyler suggested, except that then you had to take the derivative of this negative, right? So I get e to the u plus c. And now I need to write my final answer. So what's my final answer to this second integral? You don't want to write u's in the final answer. You want to write x's. So what would we write? That's right, Ben. Good. Does that make sense? What's a good thing to do if I'm not sure if I'm right? Yeah, let's take the derivative of that to check. Okay. So over here on the side, let me check. The derivative of e to the negative x squared would be e to the negative x squared times the derivative of negative x squared, right? Now, what's the derivative of negative x squared? Negative 2x, e to the negative x squared, it works. That's what you were taking the antiderivative of. So when you do a substitution, you're kind of doing the chain rule backwards. I don't know if you see that or not. And it's funny, because I told you guys, it's hard to figure out what to let u equal. And I said, you, you want to let u be the thing in parentheses. Well, here, I think I may have shown you guys this. If you were writing this in computer language, you would tell the computer to do the integral of negative 2x times exp negative x caret 2. Th this is how the computer might write, and you might write dx. This is how you might tell a computer to do it. We write e to the negative x squared as e per, exp parentheses. The input of the e function is up in the exponent. So that's what I ended up letting u equal. Now why doesn't it work here? Well, suppose I say, let u equal negative x squared. Well, then what's my problem? What does du equal? Well, it's negative 2x dx, right? But there's an issue. What's the problem? We have the dx, but we don't have this stuff. You guys see that? If you don't have du, then you can't do the substitution. And that's why no one can do that one um, using fundamental theorem. They need to use some kind of approximation technique, like the rectangles. So I have two more for us to try here. And again, I said, hey, you know, you really want to let u equal the stuff in parentheses. Now, the way this is written, I don't have anything in parentheses. But for that first one, any guess what I'm going to let u equal? Exactly. That's exactly it. Because a lot of times, like when you write that in a calculator, it's in parentheses. So let's do it. Let's try it. Let's let u equal what's under the radical. So let's see. We'll let u equal 1 plus e to the x. Okay. The next thing I should do immediately is I should write du. What does du equal here? What is it? E to the x. And then what else do you want to write? dx. That's right. You want to write e, du is e to the x dx. Okay. And now, what's really cool about this problem is du equals e to the x dx. See how that's kind of sitting right here? That's a good thing. Because I claim now we can rewrite this problem as 
this stuff here is du divided by the square root of u. I got all the x's out of there. Now, that's kind of one thing you look for is you get all the x's out of there. But then the second thing is you get a new integral and you ask yourself, does that help? Is this one easier to do? And this reminds me of the end of class on Friday. I went back to some problems from, I forget, was it section one? Yeah, antiderivatives. And I was just asking you guys, can you do like things like this? If you rewrite this one, you should be able to do it. We're going to rewrite this as u to some power du. Do you know what power it would be? Almost. Why negative a half? It's in the bottom, so the negative sign goes there. And then 1 half because, well, that's square root. So now we can actually integrate, right? Let's do it. We get u to what power? Right, I take negative 1 half, I add 1 to it, I get positive 1 half plus c. And then I also need to think about what to put out front. So what goes in front since I just made it u to the positive 1 half? You can't just up the exponent. You also have to put something out front. No. There it is. 2. You've got to put a 2 out front. How do you check? Take the derivative. If I took the derivative, what would happen? Bing, the 1 half would come down times 2, giving me 1. See that? And you would get bing, u to the negative 1 half. See that? OK, what's the final answer then? Well, 2. I don't want to write u. I want to write 1 plus e to the x. That's what u is. Let's put that under a square root sign, because that's what 1 half power means. I guess we'll find out if you guys are getting this or not if we try this other one. Um, x squared, square root of x cubed plus 9. dx. All right, Lauren and Tyler, I'm going to throw you two together for group work today, and the other two I already had paired up. And uh, maybe we're at the point you guys can try this now. All right, talk it out and see if you guys can get it. I'm going to get a drink of water. I'll be right back. All right, so let me try this. So I'm going to try, just like you guys, let u equal x to the third plus 9. Now, what does du equal? 3x squared dx. Now, what's the issue? We have an x squared dx, which is good. What do we wish we had? I wish I had 3x squared dx. I don't. So now it's like, now what, Paul? OK. So I don't know if anyone thought of this, but you can get 3x squared dx. Watch. This is really a clever move, whoever thought of this originally. You can write this as. I said I want 3x squared, right? Square root of x cubed plus 9 dx. As long as I, I can multiply by 3 if I also multiply by 1 third. Because what did I really multiply by that? 1. I didn't change it. To me, that's clever. Someone thought of doing that. And then when you do it, you now have 1 third integral what? Well, all this stuff here, 3x squared dx, that's my du. You see that? So then what are we left with? 
Sure, u to the 1 half, or square root of u. And now I'm at the point where I can actually compute this. So let me finish it up. Let's see. I need to bring the 1 third down. That's a constant. I need to write u to the 3 halves power plus c. But then what, what constant should I put out front if I have u to the 3 halves power? 2 thirds. So let's write times 2 thirds. There it is. 1 third times 2 thirds u to the 3 halves plus c. So let's see what we get. Final answer. 2 ninths times something to the 3 halves plus c. What would be the something? Yeah, that was up above. x cubed plus 9. So there's my answer. And again, it's real easy to check. How do I check? Well, take the derivative. 2 ninths times bing, 3 halves times bing, x cubed plus 9 to the 1 half times bong. What's the bong? three x squared, right? And does it work? Well, yeah, it works because these twos cancel, and then this three and that three cancel with that nine, and so all the numbers go away, and you just have x squared, square root of x cubed plus nine, you say, yeah, that works. That's what I started with. But this is the first time that we've ever multiplied by something in order to get the du that I didn't have. You might remember the very first example we did, there was this 4 just sitting there. That's not usually what happens. Usually you need to kind of get what you need. I'll see if we can try it again here. Oh, this is me talking about a definite integral. I should do that, but then Maybe I should do this one for you guys. Let me go back. Hmm. All right. So suppose you have a definite integral. x squared times the square root of x cubed plus 9 dx. But now I'm integrating from 0 to 3, right? The question is, how do you do it? Because this is why we want to do, right? We want to do antiderivatives so we can use the fundamental theorem. So this is the kind of problem I want to be able to do. Here I go. All right. Again, I have more than one approach to show you. Okay? And you'll, you'll probably try both and kind of figure out which one you like better. Okay, here's method one. I'm going to say, do a lot of work and get, well, this, right? We already did this problem. Two ninths x cubed plus 9 to the 3 halves power. But I'm not going to put plus c. What am I going to do instead? Draw my bar and write what? 3 and 0, 0 and 3, right? Because we know we have to do f of b minus f of a. So this is typically what happens. So now let's see. This would equal 2 ninths, 3 cubed plus 9, minus 
2 ninths 0 cubed plus 9. Right? That's what it would equal. Oh, wait. I need the 3 halves power here, and I need the 3 halves power there, right? Okay. Now I got it. So I plug in the 3, I plug in the 0, and I subtract what I get. Now, this first piece would be 2 ninths of, well, let's see, 27 plus 9, that's 36, to the 3 halves power, minus 2 ninths of 9 to the 3 halves power. Now, do you guys know how to compute something to the 3 halves power? Well, you, you have a power and you have a root, right? Which of those numbers is the root? Mm-hmm. That means square root, right? Well, if it's me, what I do is I do the root first. Because that makes things smaller. So, like, what's the square root of 36? All right. So we have 2 ninths of 6 cubed minus 2 ninths of 3 cubed. And now just order of operation. And some of you want to just type this all in the calculator. You could do that. But it's actually not too hard. Um, I do the exponents before I do the multiplying. So let's see, I have 2 ninths of, well, this is um, 6 times 6 times 6 is 216. I had a really good algebra teacher that made me memorize all my perfect cubes. So this is 27. And now, does 9 go into 216? Yes, it does. I know that because if I add them up, 2 plus 1 is 3 plus 6 is 9. So I get 2 times, is this 24, I think, minus 2 times 3. So that's 2 times 21. I'm getting 42 for my answer, 42. Meaning of life? Tyler gets my reference. Okay. Now, that's one way to do this problem. Notice there's a lot of work even after the calculus is done. Now you got a lot of work to plug in. Okay. I want to show you one other thing that's done so you won't be confused when it happens. All right. Start all over. We know we want to come up with 42. Here I go. Integral 0 to 3, x squared, square root of x cubed plus 9. So again, let's go through it in slow motion. What do we let u equal? Mm -hmm. What do we let du equal? three x squared dx. We don't have three x squared. What do we have? We have x squared. By the way, I'm going to show you another approach. I like to call it the Armstrong approach. You guys know Armstrong? Yeah, the first author of your book. Okay. He's not the first person that I've seen do this, but I know he likes to teach it early. And I like to show my students both ways. He says, look, we don't have 3x squared dx. What we have is x squared dx, right? So let's write down what x squared dx equals. Some people like this. Well, what I'm saying is, what would you do to both sides of the equation above to get what x squared dx equals? Well, you divide by 3. So you could say that x squared dx is one-third du. And now you substitute. And so what do you get? Well, square root of u times this x squared dx is one-third du. OK. And so we get 
Well, one third integral u to the one half du. And now you're getting exactly what we got before. Now, please notice there's something I didn't write down that I should have, right? What did I stop writing? The what? I did stop writing dx because we changed to du, so that's one thing. Yeah, the 3 and the 0 aren't there, right? Now, I want to show you guys. If I actually write 0 here and 3 here, I'm writing it in red because I think that's actually an error. Because when you write this integral, you're saying what u equals. If you write that, you better be really careful that this is x equals 0 to x equals 3. You see, what I did last time I did this over on the left was I did a whole lot of work. I got the final answer. And at the end, here let me show you, I put the x's back in. Then I substitute in 0 and 3, right? Because those are x values. And that's one way to come up with 42. But there's another way that people sometimes do it. They say, hey, while I'm changing everything to, to use, why don't I change the limits of integration to u also? Here's what I mean. When I write what u equals, up here I wrote u equals x cubed plus 9. You need to understand that what that really means is u of x is x cubed plus 9, right? Because u is just a function of x. Well, if that's true, then you can do this. You could say, hey, when x equals 3, what does u equal? u of 3. 3 would be 3 cubed plus 9. 27 plus 9 is 36. Or u of 0 is equal to what? 9. Now, what some people do, this is really kind of cool, is these x values, when they change all the variables to u, they'll change the limits to u also. So this is 9, and this is 36. So let me show you how it works. I get 1 third. OK, when I integrate u to the 1 half, I know I get u to the 3 halves, right? and put a two-thirds out front. And I don't write plus C. Instead, I just put the bar. What am I going to put over here? 9 and 36. So I now am at the point where I have two-ninths of, well, 36 to the 3 halves power minus 2 ninths of 9 to the 3 halves power. I'm exactly where I was over on the left, right? And if you work it out again, you're still going to get 42. But I, I guess I wanted to show you sometimes people will change from x to u, and sometimes they'll just leave it as is. Either way is OK. You'll have to maybe try both to see what you think works a little better. All right, one last example and I'm done. Let's go to it. Oh, wait a minute. There's a typo. We don't want two dx's, right? I actually kind of showed you the places you could put the dx. 
problem was I wrote two of them. Sometimes we'll write the dx up here in a fraction. Sometimes we won't. Sometimes we'll write the dx out here. Either way means the same exact thing. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay. So that's my function. What do you think we want to let u equal? Thirty minus x squared. I'll try it. Does it work? Well, du would equal what? Almost. Negative two x dx. Can we get negative two x dx to show up in the problem and become my du? Well, I can because I have x and I have dx. Maybe I should have written it over here. I don't know. Right? You can write it either place. There's my x dx, right? You guys want to do it the way I showed you at first, or do you want to do it the Armstrong way? Which way? Armstrong? OK, so what would he do? The next thing he would do is write down what does x dx equal? What are you going to write? There it is. Okay. So now we rewrite the integral and we'd make our substitution. And so where it used to say x dx, I can write negative one half du. And what are we going to put in the denominator of the fraction? U squared, sure. Okay, did this help? Oh, one more thing. In this problem, this is a definite integral. So we have a choice. Do you guys want to change to u's so I won't have to worry about them later, or do you want to leave them as x's? You tell me. I can do it either way. When I first started this, yeah, Brian? Is there a way to know from a trick or something that you know the trick better? I would say that, honestly, it's not that one way is better or the other. It's what way you're comfortable with. I do know when I first started, I really liked leaving these until the end. So I'm going to leave them. But everyone's different. You can try changing them, too. And I can show you that. Let's, let's do this for starters. So now what I'm going to write, I have to rewrite the integral so I can actually do it. Now, see this negative 1 half? Just like you can ignore it when you take a derivative, you can also ignore it when you write, take an antiderivative. Let me write it out front. Negative 1 half integral. Again, this is x equals 3 to x equals 5. And then the rest of this, does it make sense to you I would write it this way? I don't know. You guys see that? Okay. So that's where I'm at. U to the negative 2 du. So what's it give me? Well, I have the negative 1 half I write down. And then what would this become? U to the... Mm-hmm. And then what comes out front? I think just negative one, right? Because when you take the derivative, bing, bing, those will cancel out. And I don't write plus c. I just draw the bar, and I'm going to write x equals 3 to x equals 5. Those are x values, not u's, so don't substitute in yet. All right, so this is positive one half times, well, u to the negative one, we can write that as um, 
30 minus x squared to the negative 1, because that's what u equals. And now I can plug in my 3 and my 5 if I want. Because now I have x's back in there. OK, almost done. By the way, negative 1 power, what does that mean? It's a fraction, right. So maybe, let's write this as a big fraction. 1 over 2 times 30 minus x squared. Because if you wrote that as a fraction, it would multiply like the two fractions and give me that. And again, I'm going from 3 to 5. So I'll do f of b minus f of a now. I'll have 1 over 2 times 30 minus 25, because that's what happens when you plug in a 5 and square it, minus 1 over 2 times, well, 30 minus 9. So this is 1 over 2 times 5 minus 1 over 2 times 21. And I guess at this point I would probably get out the calculator. So I have 1 tenth decimal. Um, you can also do this. You guys know this, the math menu? Choice one here. Change your answer to a fraction. Kind of nice to have. All right, so 8 over 105 is what I'm looking at here. Do you guys have any questions?